Hey guys, it's Vic with High Desert Man, and we are back to do the second review for the new Fox Cigar and Hirochi Robina uh, collaboration. It's this little baby right here, and uh, I've had one of these already, but I didn't really get to focus on it. I was smoking it that night at the event, so we're going to jump into this. Let's hit the intro first. All right, everyone, how is it going? I am really excited to uh, smoke this and really get to spend some time thinking about it and stuff because uh, the other night, Saturday night, when I smoked it, it was a great smoke. Uh, there, were, there was a lot going on and it fit right in my wheelhouse there. Like I said, this is the new uh, Fox Cigar House Blend, which was a collaboration between Fox Cigar, Hirochi Robina, and Omar Gonzalez Aleman, who owns uh, the La Corona factory SA in Esteli, Nicaragua. So his factory produced the cigars. Um, Hirochi had something to, to do with the blending as well as uh, Omar. And, uh, and then Fox Cigar worked with them to, to pick the blends and stuff. So the project itself Fox worked on for uh, a year and a half with them and that was the last cigar that I did, the Eagle Vitola. This Vitola is called the Alejo and it is a five and a half by 58 uh, traditional Parejo. And these are the boxes that they come in if you didn't see the last video. And these boxes are really cool because you can see the sides are sealed with Boveda stickers because this is a makeshift little uh, humidor and when you lift the lid off the presentation of the cigars is kind of unique so all the cigars are standing up it's a beautiful presentation from a consumer perspective it's a box of 10 and then right in between they've got um, a Boveda pack now same thing as the other uh, pack that I the other box I opened, this Boveda pack still has some moisture, it still has life in it, but it's it's pretty getting pretty hard in some spots and uh, the moisture for the most part is, is fairly depleted. So that tells me that these boxes are not true humidors, they're not, and it, it's a porous wood, right? So even if it seals good around the cigars, this wood is going to leak out humidification over time and over te uh, temperature fluctuations. I wanted to mention Kevin's video, the uh, Kevin from Cigar Prop. He put out a video last week on uh, the smoke chest, a total customization that he did on the smoke chest. Um, that really was cool, and 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 it was a good video. He he showed the whole process of what he did. Uh, he burned the wood. He would used some uh, uh, a stain to stain the outer box and stuff and and um, just made it look really sweet and kind of made it his own but I wanted to mention it because um, it was a really good example of some of the stuff you can do yourself you know I've done a number of uh, posts and videos now on things that I've done but I haven't really gone crazy with the outside of the box yet um, and, and the reason why is just, I just haven't had time and I haven't decided what I want to do but I do plan on doing something um, but Kevin did a great job, and uh, I, I'm sure if you guys follow me, you follow Kevin, but if you don't, check out Cigar Prop. Um, Kevin does great uh, cigar accessories. He does great reviews. <laughs> He's pretty comical. He, he uh, has a good element of humor, um, and he does great beard products as well. I use a few of his beard products. I'm getting pretty low on what he's given me. Um, but uh, yeah, he makes some nice beard products as well. So this, this um, let's talk about the cigar first and then we'll talk about the video. Like I said, it's a five and a half by 58. So it's a really, really nice ring gauge. Little bit on the large size. I, I prefer 54, but it is very nice. It's got a little pinched off top here. Uh, not really a pigtail, but it, they just kind of gave it a twist and then cut it off. The cap is beautiful. The wrapper is beautiful. It's the same general blend as the Eagle was. However, this cigar was rolled five years ago. 
the tobacco was aged five years and then the cigar was rolled and then it was aged another five years. So essentially you have 10 year old tobacco here. Uh, that's what Hirochi said. And, and it was kind of unclear because they, they kind of just uh, were talking first about the cigar being aged from the point it was rolled. And so I thought it was five years, but then he um, later on Saturday night at the event, he's, he's, he had mentioned 10 years and I caught him on it and he said, well, the tobacco was five years old, then we rolled it five years ago, hence the 10 years. So you've got a really good aged cigar here. There's not too much of an aroma on the body. The foot is kind of a shaggy closed foot. Um, not shaggy, but it's a, a little bit of a closed foot. And it just smells sweet. And um, so the wrapper is uh, Ecuadorian Habano 2000, aged for five years. The binder is uh, Jalapa. And the filler is Nicaraguan and then an undisclosed uh, component in there as well. All right. All right, the draw is good, but just a little bit loose. And it's got that slightly closed foot on there, so I'm, I'm concerned about what it's going to be like after I burn that. On the cold draw, I'm getting cinnamon. And cinnamon and tobacco. That's really all I'm getting. So in this video, we're going to see... Uh, two interviews of Hirochi. One interview I did, and I gotta say right up front, I don't know how I'm gonna, uh, I, I went back and just kinda glanced at the video, and I wish I had paid more attention to the camera uh, for two reasons. One, the video got cut off at one point because uh, it stopped recording and I didn't realize it. But two, was I'm sitting on the couch in a goofball position and I didn't it didn't feel bad when I was sitting there but when I went back and looked at it I was like it's almost pornographic <laughs> I'm going to try to crop into the video a little bit and see if I can crop some of that out if I can't then you guys have to live with it I apologize but uh, so it's uh, an interview with me and Hirochi and then I recorded the interview that Rob did of Hirochi and Rob's was more just kind of a fun interview to um, just add some humor in the air and stuff. So that's what we're going to see. You want to get a little bit of that closed foot wrapper flavor before it burns away. And then you got to light the scar the rest of the way. Oh, right off the bat, it is good. It is good. Um, this time I'm on the eagle. I got some cayenne pepper and white pepper. This time I'm getting white and black pepper, and I think more of the white pepper. All right, there is a tiny bit of that citrus zest component that I got on the eagle. Um, but this one is, is spicier. Overall, it seems spicier. Now, I'm, I'm right at the beginning of the cigar, so that's going to level out a bit. So um, we'll smoke on it for a minute here and see what happens with it. So ye uh, yesterday morning, I sold a smoke chest, uh, a kit, to a guy in Germany. And... So now I have a smoke chest in Germany, uh, one or two in Australia, three or four in Canada, and I think someone from England bought one from me as well. So that's pretty awesome. The smoke chest is kind of going global. I'm really stoked about that. Uh, the only thing is, uh, only one guy has posted pictures. Well, actually, he, that was US. 
and no one from outside the U.S. has posted pictures or posted um, uh, hashtags or anything yet, which is really kind of a bummer. But I'm hoping this guy in Germany uh, does something cool with it, and I hope he sends me pictures because he got the smoke chest kit, so that means he's providing his own box. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what box he puts it in. Boy, it's got a pretty long finish. All right, guys. Let's jump into the interview with Hirochi, and I'll smoke on this for a while. When we come back, we'll talk about how this cigar finished out. Stick around. Hey, guys. It's Vic with High Desert Man, and I am sitting here with Hirochi Robina from, uh, from the Robina Farms in uh, Cuba. And uh, the reason why he is in town right now is because Fox Cigar is uh, releasing their... Oh, what's it called? What's this called? <laughs> well, it's La Familia Robina. But the name of the Vitola is Alejo. Alejo. Vitola is the collaboration between Fox and, and Robina. Okay. And so, I guess to start off with, how long have you guys been working on this? Well, that cigar, uh, we are working in that cigar for the last five years. Five years? Yes. Holy it's the, cow, it's I was the way aging off. of this cigar. Okay. That's the reason the quality is very high. We have two different cigars. We have this one. So, 50 and a half or plus 58 and this one is a figurado we call the eagle the eagle the eagle is a figurado also with five years old i saw the pictures uh the pictures look amazing uh, we uh, call alejo because alejo is the short name the, of my grandfather alejandro alejandro so, okay very it's a cool. great cigar great cigar people enjoy a lot and, and so this this cigar uh the, so what do I want? How long has Fox been working with you on this project? So, from... Uh, I don't remember exactly. About a year and a half. A year and a half. Uh, okay, about a year and a half. But, so far as the... You working on the so tobacco... The reason, the reason that tobacco has five years old... Because we made that cigar for the 100th anniversary of my grandfather. Oh, wow, okay. Was last year. Okay, right. Then we made the cigars five years ago for the my grandfather anniversary. But after that we decided to make the collaboration with Fox. Okay. And uh, we did it. And that's the, the this is cigars. it. And people are happy, that's the most important. Now we want to make something special for the next year. Is the hundred seventy fifth anniversary of uh, Vegas Robina of plantation. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, remember, we start in 1845. Right. So next year is the 175th anniversary. And we, made, we want to make something very, very special for that, for this occasion. Oh, wow, 175 uh -huh. years. Yeah. So uh, I watched an interview of, uh, your father is Carlos, yes? Yes, my father. So I watched an interview um, uh, of your father and he was talking about how your grandfather, Alejandro, sort of um, handpicked you mm -hmm. to continue the, the, the farm. And, and so why was that? What, what about, uh, why didn't it go to your father and then to you? At the beginning, I didn't know. Uh -huh. I didn't know because I was born in Havana. I, I was a sportsman in Havana. I started in Havana. But one day my grandfather talked to me about to start rolling cigars in the Partagat factory and in the Uman, H. Uman factory. Okay. In the, I'm talking about in the 1996, 1997. Okay. Then uh, I started to roll cigars in, in Havana. And in 1998, I received a, new, a news. My grandfather selected me to travel with him to Egypt. And Lebanon mm. to make a, a tour to make a promotion of a uh, Rubina brand. Okay. Uh, and that trip, he told me. So when we come back to Cuba, never again to the factory. Now I need you in the farm to teach you about how grow tobacco in the farm. So since 1898, I'm in the farm with my grandfather until 2010 when he passed away and now we are in 2019 
is uh, many years in the plantation. So a full nine years under you, uh, sort of running things there uh, now, right? Yeah. And my father, my father is working in the tobacco life. My father worked in uh, Habano's house. Okay. In Habana, he sold cigars. Okay, right. He sold cigars, and I hope in the beginning of the next year uh, he come back to the farm again, and he stayed with me. Okay. He stayed with me and with my daughters, my wife, my mother, all the family, all together. In right. The same place. Yeah, that that would be fantastic. Yeah, for yeah you. fantastic. I'm very <laughs> excited for that. Um, so you uh, you mentioned your daughters. Uh, the, um, I, I mean, you're kind of last in line right now, right? Mm -hmm. what, what if, if, where does the farm go after you? Well, I have four daughters. Okay. One is 17, one is 15, 13, and five years old. Oh, wow. I don't know yet uh, who, who want to continue. I don't want to push. Right. Uh, if they have the tobacco inside her blood, one, why not a woman? Oh, woman yeah, is, absolutely. It's a great idea. Absolutely. It's a great and my, my, my daughter are very, very pretty women. Very nice girls. <laughs> and uh, very smart also. And uh, But maybe I have to wait for a grandson, like my grandfather. Uh -huh. So, I don't know. So just wait and yet. see. I don't know yet. Now I, I, work, I have to work hard, and, uh, but I don't know the future. I don't know the future. So how did, um, well, I, I want to ask you about the coffee. And, and uh, I know the coffee is not that big of a deal, but mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a very big coffee uh, person. I'm also a big cigar person. Um, on my channel, I've got a, a, a series called Care to Pair. I, I pair up different coffee drinks with cigars and stuff like that. Um, so I was just uh, interested uh, in, you know, how... It, from what it sounded like on the interview that I listened to, um, you kind of took to growing uh, coffee, mm -hmm. more or less for the employees of the farm and stuff, yes. right? Just so yes. you, because there's you've got a number of employees and it's too much coffee to it buy. Is, uh, too much coffee and a very good coffee. Yes, have a very good coffee, and also for us, I I I I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> and a lot. And for me, the best combination with cigars is, is coffee. That's the best combination. Okay. So many people like with rum, and other ones, pe people like with whiskey, or in Europe, people like with wine. In China, people like with tea. Uh -huh. uh, but the best combination with cigars is coffee. I think I agree with you. <laughs> I'm a little bit biased. I don't drink anything I else. I love but... coffee, man. I love coffee. <laughs> Um, one more question about these, I, and I don't know if one of you guys can answer, but the packaging is pretty unique. Uh, it's a different kind of box. The cigars are standing up. Yeah. Uh, who came up with that, and uh, how'd that come about? Well, it was the idea of Spencer, and uh, it's a very nice idea. I love the pockets. The cigars is, uh, how do you say in English? Uh, the vertical, a or vertical sta standing up. Yeah, it's a nice idea, and uh, also it's uh, like a humidor. Every box is like a humidor. Really? Yeah. That that would explain the uh, uh, Boveda sticker on the side. That makes sense. Oh wow, wow, that is neat. Mm -hmm. So there's ten cigars, ten uh, cigars. to a box. Each box, ten cigars. Oh my gosh, they're even they're even more gorgeous in person than they are in the pictures, mm -hmm. man. <laughs> Wow. I love the boxes. Yeah, the box is That's really, really neat. beautiful boxes. Um, so, HR is also your brand, mm -hmm. uh, out of Nicaragua. So, how, how um, for you, what, how are you involved with that? Do, do you grow that? To, you don't grow that tobacco as well. Okay, so, I don't have uh, time to grow tobacco there. So we have uh, farmers mm -hmm. in Nicaragua, and we have people in charge about the plantations. Okay, and about the system. What uh, it, because it depends what we need. 
So we have the techniques and engineers there, oh, okay. and they make what I want and what we need for to make our cigars. Gotcha, gotcha. What was I involved more in the production in the factory than in the farm in Nicaragua? Okay. Yeah, because I grow tobacco in Cuba also, and uh, it's hard. So what was what was uh, when you started the HR brand? Did you have to learn anything new about the differences between Cuban tobacco and Nicaraguan tobacco and, and tasting differences and stuff? I started the project in 2008. Okay. 2008, the first I do is I fly directly to Ecuador. Ah, okay. To check the, the wrappers. Because we use the over wrappers is, is from Ecuador. And after that, we start the com communication a conversation with Omar Gonzalez is my my partner is uh, is always collaboration Omar Gonzalez Aleman okay he's Cuban man he's uh, he have a lot of experience about cigars uh, he was in Cuba during many years working in the Corona factory in Havana our factory in Nicaragua name is Corona also and uh, um, then we start to talk about the blending, but I, I have been in Cuba, so it was difficult. So every week, yeah. Omar start to send me uh, small bundles with, with the samples, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Okay. Then I try, and by phone, I say, Omar, you know what? No good. Change a little bit this, change a little blah, 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 blah. We change. Then again, a little bit more change, but then we arrive what we want to make the H the signature HHR. Okay. So after that, they start. He started the production in 2010, and we uh, show to the world in 2014. 2014. In the IPCPR in Vegas. Okay. In. Uh well, and you've been to the IPCPR before, yes? yes? Every year. Every, okay, okay. Interesting. Since 2014 to until now. Uh, for the HR uh, yeah, brand yes, and for stuff. Yeah, HR brand. Very neat. So, <laughs> so far as the Cuban growing goes, and it, it, you get you get 10% of, of all production or just 10% of the land? How does that... No, no, I'm the owner of the land. You're the owner of the land. Yeah, but we have to sell all the production to the government. Okay. In Cuba, it's the monopoly. So every tobacco farmers in Cuba have to sell the production to the government. But I keep the 10% for my own consumer and for friends. Yeah, and, and that's basically just for yes, family and basically friends? Basically for family, my workers and friends. Okay, gotcha. And, uh, uh, of course, I keep the best. Ten <laughs> percent. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> oh my gosh! So was that cigar that Mitch gave us? Uh, that was from the Robina farm, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! That was an amazing cigar. Hi, did you try? Yeah, Mitch gave me one here a couple months back, mm -hmm. and and yeah. uh, he was telling me, um, he was telling me how creamy it was and everything, and. Over the years, I've probably had 25 or 30 different uh, Cuban cigars and mm -hmm. stuff. I, I travel a lot, and so like when I get up to Canada or something like that, I, I usually buy some. But, um, oh my gosh, it was, it was a whole new experience right from the first puff. Yeah. It was amazing. And I, the creaminess on that cigar was... It was so creamy, it felt like I could pour it off into a glass. It was amazing. <laughs> I, I've never had a cigar that creamy before. And my idea, you know what is my idea in the future? Is to make the HR, I, I want to mix the HR from Nicaragua than the HR from Cuba. And I want to mix the blending. I already made the blending. Uh -huh. uh, it's amazing taste. But I want to make a blending between HR from Nicaragua and HR from Cuba together yes. for, for the world. That would people be have amazing. the possibility to try different flavors, different yeah. aromas. 
That, and that's what I want to do. That may future. not be too too much into the future. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we may be able to do that before yeah. too long, <laughs> which would be amazing. <laughs> so how big is the farm? It's uh, 17 hectares. In uh, acres is uh, 43 ac acres. Okay, okay. It's not too big. Not too big. I'm, uh, well. But it's very good. I'm, I'm kind of a farmer as well. So I, I live about three hours northeast of here, uh, and I have five acres. Um, but, uh, you know, all my wife and I do is uh, we have a real nice garden, and I raise animals, goats and chickens. And uh, I know you got chickens on I the farm. I have a lot of chickens. Yeah, I heard, them, I heard them in chickens, the background. Chickens, <laughs> pig, cow, horse. Yeah. I have an area. For, for those animals. Okay. Uh, because in the tobacco land, no animals. Sure. No, no animals. Yeah, okay. well, I mean, they would they yeah. would ruin your it's crops no and good. stuff. No yeah. good for tobacco land. Yeah. So are, are your animals um, for consumption and... Uh, Chicken and pig. Okay. For consumption. Horse and cow no, is to work. Oh, just for working. Yeah, okay. for working. Uh, horse in my house is for my daughters. Yeah, they yeah. They don't work. They only enjoy it with my daughters. That makes my sense. My cow, yes, the work. What kind of work does the cow do? It's pulling, uh, just pulling stuff? No, for, for milk. Oh, for milk, of course. For milk. Yeah. And to work. The, the, how how you call it in English? The cow is a girl. The bull? 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 Oh, bull? the bull, bull is a boy. Okay, yeah. bull, to uh, prepare land also. Okay. We, we use a tractor, but when you have already the the plants is in the field, okay, you can go inside with the tractor. Then you you use the 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 bowl. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm. It's easy. So the planting uh, season is no, now in November. Okay. So is that when you actually plant in the ground or in the ground? In the ground. Now I have the the seed. Okay. The seed is ready in the. Sit, sit place? It's a seed bed. Seed bed. A seed bed, okay. Yeah, seed bed is already there. And uh, in 35 days, is ready to transplant to the real soil. In 35 November, days. November. So, uh, so that started in September. That started this month with, this, with the seed yes, bed, right? Yes, 23. 23, I, I put a seed. Okay. And at the beginning of November, we transplant to the real plantation. It's 10 inch more or less size of the plant. We transplant. When you transplant. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then how much longer from there until you start? Uh, the harvest? Yeah. Well, uh, we start to plant in November. We made the first harvest at the middle or at the end of December. Oh, because wow. you have to make the harvest is the bottom to top. Okay. You, it's by labels. So the first labels, you have to, to make the harvest to the first labels. Then you got guarantees, guarantees side the, the well. Then when you make the harvest in the bottom leaves, you have the circulation of the wind. Okay. Then the blue mold and the fungus can go up because the circulation of the wind. Okay. So in January, we continue harvest by labels, by labels, but and we finish in uh, the beginning of February. So you start at the bottom and just work up it's the plant? Three months. Three in months. Three months is inside the house, the drying house. Okay. 90 days, it's 90 days. And then once it's in the drying house, how long is that period? Inside the drying house, it depends on the weather, is between 45 days to 60 days. Okay. Because you need humidity, you need temperature, but it's, a, it's the weather. The weather changes a lot. But also I have the, the, the house to dry tobacco with a machine. Okay. I use a machine and we incorporate the, the humidity and the temperature, the, exactly what the tobacco needs. To, to make the change to green, yellow, to brown. The drying process. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, so now now it's dry, and then uh, you pull it down and, and bale it? Yeah, no, to, you make a pilon. 
uh, okay, pile it so that okay, you can yeah, start below. to ferment yeah. it. It's uh, below one, with one meter and a half. Okay. And uh, maybe, I don't know, six meters or seven meters uh, for fermentation. The first fermentation. So we, when you take the leaves, when the leaves is ready dry, but you have a day with humidity, because if you don't have humidity, you broke the leaves. So right. You made it. So the leaves is uh, with humidity. Yeah, humidity. subtle. Then you made a pilon, and with this humidity, they get a fever. A fever? Um, yeah, the temperature raises. The temperature raises. is okay. high, high, high. We have a, a, a machine to know the how warm it is inside. Inside, okay. And if it is too high, we, we change the position in the pilon. Okay. So how long after that we solve the production? Does so, it go? What, how many fermentations does it go I through? made one fermentation, just one, one. One, okay. Because remember, well, I'm talking about the tobacco, what I sold to the government. Okay. But for my tobacco, it depends on what I need. It depends what the, my tobacco leaves resist. Mm -hmm. So the bottom leaves, you can make a high fermentation because it's very uh, skin. Thin? Thin. Thin. Okay. Uh, you, you destroy the leaves. We make a whole fermentation in the high levels because okay. it's a strong leaves. You're right. Okay. Yeah. They're stronger and they're more durable. Yeah. And I don't have fermentation to the wrapper. I don't make fermentation to the wrapper. Not at all? No. I, oh. made, I made the aging. No fermentation. I made just, the aging of the Just wrapper. aging? Just aging. So how do you age it? Uh, in, the, in the packets. With the palm uh, leaves, right? Okay. We made the packets. Uh, we made the agent there. Ah, because so the leaves, the the wrapper is very delicate leaves. Mm -hmm. If you make a fermentation, you destroy the leaves. Remember, we use the middle labels for wrapper. Okay. You don't use the top leaves. So yeah, so that's that's different from, uh, for instance, like. Uh, um, Connecticut broadleaf mm -hmm. wrapper, which is a pretty hardy mm -hmm. wrapper and stuff, but they but they, it's fermented a bit to to I guess to break it down a little bit so that it's easier to work with and stuff. Mm -hmm. I would imagine. Um, okay, so you put it in the palm leaves, and then uh, how long do you age? Who made the aging? I have wrapper from 2014, five years old wrapper. Okay. So how old is the wrapper in this cigar? This one is five years old. Everything is five years old. Oh, all the tobacco. All, all the tobacco. <laughs> wow. May, may I uh, yeah, look course, at it again? Course. It's a beautiful box. I love that. The boxes are amazing. It's amazing, yes. The whole presentation is just beautiful. And they're going to come with uh, a Boveda pack in there, so they're, they're ready to go. You open the box, you light one up. So I smoked yesterday. I smoked oh, really? one of the samples. The the I smoked both both yesterday. <laughs> and um, I smoked many cigars yesterday. Oh yeah. Yes, because you know you are with customers. Customer yeah. want to talk with you, and uh, it's the best opportunity to to talk experience between right. customers and me. It's okay. So getting into. Uh, the farming what was it was it something that you just uh you just kind of naturally took to you you had a, a desire to learn it in in the farm when i arrived in 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 cuba in cuba when when your grandfather started yeah. teaching you was very strong at the beginning okay because remember i born in the city and right i moved to the farm so you were used very, to city. I was very right? young, very young. My my girlfriend was in Havana. Right. My friends was in Havana. Was very very strong for me. What I do is I, I work all week in the farm. Okay. And Friday afternoon I drive to Havana. Okay. Uh, That's to, what just like to stay there two the hours. Weekend is two hour and a half. Two and a half hours. Okay. Then I come back Sunday late or very early Monday, but was at the beginning first uh, months. So after that, uh, I didn't drive every week. Uh, one week, uh, one week I stay in the farm. Okay. So after that, two weeks in the farm, 
and one trip to Havana. Uh, at the end, no more Havana. Wow. <laughs> I'm married in Pinar del Rio, and I made my family, I built my house, so changed my life. Your whole life changed, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So so how long have you been in uh, the tobacco industry now? Uh, signed the factory to now, uh, 1990, 1996 to yeah. 2019, it's uh, 23 years. 23 years, wow. Yeah. So uh, I'm the fifth generation in my, fa in my tobacco family. Yeah, I was trying to figure that uh -huh. out because at 1845, I was uh -huh. thinking, oh, boy, that, there's some generations in there. To, <laughs> and and uh, the, 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 I don't know if it was your great-great-grandfather or who, but it, it came from... Uh, from Spain. Oh, from Spain. Yeah, yeah, it came from Spain. Oh, okay. Uh, wasn't someone in uh, the Cayman Islands, though? Cayman Islands? La Palma. La Palma. The yeah, island La Palma. Uh, my Robina family from from Cayman Cayman uh, Canary Canarian oh, Iceland, Canary Islands. Canary okay. Island, no. And uh, the was Robina. My my grandfather Robina Pereda. Okay. So the rest of the family from one place in Spain name uh, is uh, Santander. Okay. It's another city from Spain. But everybody from Spain. Everyone's so they arrive in Cuba and they start to grow uh, sugar, caña. Oh wow! Yeah, and after that they move to our place now, and they start to grow tobacco mm -hmm. in 1845. So the tobacco started in 1845, yes. and then uh, wow, and it's okay. So uh, you, your brand in. Cuba is uh, Vegas Ve Robina. Vegas Robina. Yeah. It's not but, my brand. It's the name of the brand. The name of the brand. Yeah. But, 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 but the farm, the name of the farm is Vegas Robina. Because Vegas means tobacco plantation. Tobacco plantation. Vegas. Okay. Vegas means tobacco plantation. Okay. And Robina is over last Your name. name. Sure. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But but you previously were working in factories for for Partagas and then two years, one years in Partagas and one years in Uma factory, and that was basically to roll just, cigars, just learning to roll, roll cigars, roll so. cigars, rolling cigars every day, eight hours every day during two years. Okay, before that, I working in a, I made pizzas in Havana. And um, before the pizzas, I work in the I work in the <laughs> construction. Okay. Uh, the construction. So my first job job was in construction. Yeah. After that, in the restaurant, made in pizzas. Okay. And after that, I roll cigars. <laughs> that is awesome. So you've got you've got a good. Uh, that's what my life has pretty much been like. I've done a lot of different stuff. <laughs> yeah, you have to work. Yeah. Hey guys, we are back. And uh, I'm getting down to the nub here. Boy, this thing smokes. This thing puts out a lot of smoke. Um, some interesting transitions in this one. That slight citrus note, uh, again, did not last too long. I got a similar citrus note on the eagle size. And, it, you know, it's interesting. Aside from the di um, size difference of these two cigars, they actually are very slightly different uh, blends. I don't believe this one has the Peruvian in it, like the other one did. And, uh, and then it's got some undisclosed tobacco in there as well. But for the most part, they really do taste uh, pretty similar. The most interesting note I got out of this one, uh, and it came about, I think it first came in about the end of the first third, was a sweet breaded note. Uh, and I, I couldn't, I, I don't know what it was exactly, but it was kind of bready and it was sweet. Really smooth on the retro hail. Lots of smoke, really good burn. Yeah, that breaded note, the breaded note is still there, but it doesn't have that same sweet component. Now it's just kind of a dry bread 
flavor. Um, the white pepper is still there, but it's it's toned down quite a bit. It's a medium strength cigar. Um, body wise, I would say that this is <clears throat> medium to full body. It does coat the mouth pretty good, and it and the coating seems to favor the back of the throat, the uh, back of the tongue, and back of the throat. I, I notice it more on the toward the back of my tongue and on the sides of my tongue. Yeah, and so the MSRP, I didn't talk about that on the last video, so I'm going to get it now. The Eagle per stick is $11.99. This one is $14.99 per stick. Uh, I think you get around a 10% discount when you buy them by the box. So the box for this was $139. The box, or wait a minute. I, actually, I think it was $130.99. And the... Um, Eagle size is $119.99. You got to try it. You got to try it, guys. And uh, hopefully we can make something happen with the collaboration. But until the next video, stay rugged.